Hi everyone. In this video, you are going to learn about noise clippers. In the previous video, I have explained you about the different types of clippers like series clippers and shunt clippers. Series clippers because the diode is connected in series with the output that is named as series clipper and in shunt clippers the diode is connected with the with parallel uh, with the output voltage that's why the clipper is known as shunt type clipper and various types of clippers also we have seen how the level has been clipped off above and refer below the reference voltage now using that concept the same series type clippers and shunt type clippers are also used to eliminate the noise present in the signal. Suppose if you are taking a sinusoidal signal with a noise component like this, I am having a sinusoidal signal because the pure waveforms will not be available in the nature. Definitely some noise will be associated with the signal. Sir. So let us consider a waveform where the signal is incorporated with some noise. This is the noise signal. See, at, a, at every crossover so from positive to negative and as well as from negative to positive, there is a noise. This is the noise signal which we no, want to eliminate. This is also noise. So, this particular noise has to be clipped off using this clippers. So, that is why these clippers are known as noise clippers. There are two types of noise clippers. There are two types of noise clippers. They are first one series type noise clippers. Series type noise clippers. And second one, shunt type noise clippers. Series type noise clippers and shunt type noise clippers. Again, same, similar concept. The output is in series with the non-linear device. Here we are using diodes. And here also, the output is in shunt with the non-linear device, which is nothing but a diode. That's why they, that is series type and shunt type respectively. Now, let us see the first one, series type, series type noise clippers. Noise clippers are used to eliminate or cut the noise component present in the signal. Okay. So, the diode which is connected here that is in series with the output voltage. But instead of using a single diode like previous cases, now we need to use two diodes. One diode conducts during positive peak and another diode conducts during negative peak. And here we are not taking the ideal diodes, we should consider practical diodes because we need to eliminate the voltage which is nothing but unwanted voltage with an amplitude of V gamma. Okay. So, D1 and D2. Okay. So, now consider whatever the signal I have explained previously. Consider the same signal. Positive peak with some noise. Assume that the amplitude of the noise is not greater than V gamma. This is time axis and this is the input voltage Vn. Now, this is the unwanted signal present at the crossover. So, nothing but from zero, positive to negative and as well as negative to positive. Assume that the amplitude of this particular noise peak is not greater than V gamma. It is somewhat less than or equal to V gamma. Now, we are taking the diodes D1 and D2 which are practical diodes. Nothing but the diode conducts one, once the input voltage is greater than V gamma or it is less than V gamma. Suppose if we are taking the input voltage, if input voltage is greater than V gamma, 
if input voltage is greater than V gamma, which diode is in on state? Diode D1 conducted because D1 is in on state because the difference between either sides of this diode like P type and N type anode and cathode is V gamma. That's why diode D1 is said to be conducted nothing but on state and D2 is said to be off state. Then what about the output voltage? Output voltage V0 is equal to so what happens when input voltage V in is greater than V gamma diode D1 is conducted D2 is off. So simply there is this a short circuit like this between input and output output is equal to input voltage. And when input voltage is less than minus V gamma input voltage is less than minus V gamma the two cases are altered then diode D2 is in conducting stage and D1 is in off state. So, D2 off, D1 off and D2 on state. Then what happens? Output voltage again follows the input voltage. Output voltage again follows the input voltage. Here during pause to peak, we can say that it is during pause to peak. During pause to peak. Because the input voltage is greater than V gamma means this occurs when input voltage is in pause to peak. And it occurs in negative peak duration. In between these two what happens when input voltage is not greater than V gamma and not less than minus V gamma then what happens. So when minus V gamma is less than V gamma V input less than V gamma. So during this period what happens? output voltage is equal to 0. Can you tell me why? See, when input voltage is less than V gamma, diode D1 is in off state. When input voltage is greater than minus V gamma, diode D2 is in off state. When both are in off state, there is no output. There is no connection between input and output. So, output is equal to 0. Output is equal to 0. Then, with these assumptions, if you draw the output waveform, then you can observe that the clipping action occurred exactly at the noise peak. This is time axis. This is the output voltage. Now during pause to peak. So this is the pause to peak and when V gamma, when input voltage is less than V gamma, then what happens output voltage is equal to 0. Output voltage is equal to 0. And again, this occurs until you find minus V gamma in the output. This is the output waveform. Okay, here is the place where we have peaks. If the input voltage is greater than V gamma, output voltage is following the input. If the input voltage is less than V gamma, output voltage is following the input. But in between this particular period, when input voltage is in between minus V gamma and plus V gamma, then output voltage is equal to 0. That's why it is 0. Again, here also 0. Okay, so this is the way how to eliminate the noise peaks in the input sinusoidal signal. Suppose if the peak noise signal is added at the peak instead of at the crossover junctions. Instead of the crossover, what we have assumed, you see here, in this case, I have assumed the noise occurred at the crossovers, nothing but from 0 to from positive to negative going and negative to positive going in at this junction if the peak if the noise signal is existed this type of circuit is helping us to eliminate the noise but if the same noise signal is appeared at the peaks at either positive peak or at the negative peak extreme ends of the peaks so then this series type clipper is no longer preferred in that case the shunt type clippers are used okay so the second concept is shunt type clippers, shunt type clippers. So, shunt type clippers are nothing but we know shunt type noise clippers. We know the output voltage is in parallel with diode. Here also we are taking two diodes, one is opposite to another. One is in the forward direction, another one is in the reverse direction and these two are connected across the output voltage.
this is the place input is applied r and diode d1 and d2 d1 is in the forward direction d2 is in the reverse direction see here what happens when input is less than v gamma what happens when input is greater than v gamma and what happens when input is in between positive v gamma and negative v gamma assume that the input voltage is having a signal like this it is having a noise at the peak it is also a sinusoidal signal but with some noise at the peaks okay v input signal so when input voltage is greater than v gamma when input is greater than v gamma what happens diode d1 is in on state d2 is in off state the same condition you might have encountered in the previous case also but output voltages are different because output voltage is in series with the diode in the previous case but here it is in parallel with the diode so output voltage is equal to as it is in short circuit short circuit is nothing but here practical diode is replaced by v gamma okay so output voltage is equal to v gamma this is first case and second case when input voltage is less than minus v gamma diode e1 is said to be off state and d2 is said to be on state then what happens v a gamma v output is equal to d2 is in on state but exhibits a voltage drop as is that is minus v gamma so output voltage is equal to minus v gamma what about the third case third case is equal to when input voltage is minus v gamma less than input voltage less than v gamma this leads to diode d1 and d2 both are in off state both are in off state see because the input voltage is less than v gamma and greater than minus v gamma so both the diodes will not come into on state and these two are set to be open circuited then output voltage is equal to input voltage so in this case output voltage is equal to input voltage exactly opposite is the case with respect to the input respect with respect to the series type flippers okay so that's why with these assumptions if you draw the output voltage see when input voltage is greater than v gamma let us consider v gamma as positive v gamma and this is negative v gamma then see positive v gamma when input voltage is greater than positive v gamma output equal to v gamma input equal to minus v gamma output equal to input is less than minus v gamma output is equal to minus v gamma and remaining period output is exactly equal to input so this is the output waveform okay we will not have exactly the sharp and curved shapes at the ends it is like a some clipping part minus v gamma at the positive v gamma okay so this is the concept of noise clippers how to eliminate the peak noise and noise at the crossovers using series type and shunt type noise clippers thank you